Hey, so check this out. <laughs> like children, uh, I'm sure a lot of us have children, right? And this goes for even little children because you can see it. If you give them everything, everything, you supply all their needs and give them everything. They don't seem to really quite appreciate that toy. You know, they might, oh, it's new and shiny, but then they want the next new and shiny thing, right? It just goes to the wayside. Video games, whatever it is. And uh, I'll give you an example with my own uh, kids, right? And and they're good kids, all three of them, right? They're all, all good. Okay. Um, now they are. Let's put it that way. Now they are, okay? But when when they were young, you know, you got to train a child up in the way that they should go. Otherwise, they're going to, you got to give them a good foundation, right? Got to lay that good foundation. But if you give them everything, like my son, for example, um, I was supposed to buy his first car. I was saving money for that. And it was going to be, you know, maybe a four or $5,000 car. But he went out and got one without me. And his mother kind of helped him out with that, right? And then they expected me to uh, foot that bill. Number one, he paid about 2000 more than the value of the car. <laughs> so he got screwed right from the get-go. And it needed a ton of work. His stepdad put a couple thousand into it. Uh, and it was already 2000 above price that it should have been. His stepdad put a couple thousand into it, and there was still a lot of problems. So I took it a friend of mine to his garage and had uh, uh, some work done to it and put another $2,000 into it. So now this car that was only worth like $3,000, <laughs> okay, uh, we've got about 9000 into it. And guess what? He didn't even have it eight months, and he flipped it. He totaled it. Thank God he didn't get killed or hurt. Totaled it. Stepdad goes out and uh, foots you know, puts his neck out there and co-signs for a truck for him, a brand new pickup truck. And his stepdad's name is on that, right? Co-signed or, or was the main purchaser or whatever. And, uh, and he totaled that. He totaled that. My son totaled four cars before the time he was 30. <laughs> he had 20, like 22, 23 tickets before he reached the age of 21. <laughs> okay. So when you keep helping him out, right? And, and my, you know, me and the uh, uh, wife were uh, separated, right? Divorced when the kids were fairly young. And uh, and there and there's another thing. You give all you can give, right? And I'm not going to get into it because right? it takes two, right? But, uh, you know, you give all you could give and you see that you're topped out and you can't give anymore. And, but yet someone always wants more, that new shiny thing. They want more and more and more, whatever, right? Uh, so it's like children too right? You keep giving it to them. They don't appreciate what they get, right? And uh, my daughter, she got a car, a great car, didn't have a spot of rust on it, but she didn't like it. It ends up being destroyed up on top of a rock somehow, some way, right? Whatever. And and then uh, I paid for her next car. I, I'm pay, making the payments, okay? Uh, and it was a little Pontiac G6, really nice car. And it was a lease turn-in. It had really low miles, like 11, 12,000 miles on it, right? It was almost new. He still smelt new. And so I'm paying for that car, making the payments for like three years. And the car is trashed in like a year, year and a half, maybe. She put over 100,000 miles on it. How, how, you know, what the, what is going on there? You know, and the car is trashed. The headlights smashed. It's been wrecked and beat up and it's just total. I said, that's it. You know, I paid on it for like, I think there was another year, year and a half or something left on, on the bill. I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not paying for it. You know, I'm not going to enable, right? You can't keep supplying everything your children need their entire life. Now, if they're, they're, they're making efforts and they're getting a good job and they're working hard and every now and then they might need help. If they come to you and ask for help as a good parent, you're, you're going to help them, but you're not going to enable them. You're going to give them just enough what they need to uh, get out of whatever uh, situation they got into. And you might only do that once or twice, right? And then that's it. It's like, okay, you keep doing the same thing over and over. I'm not going to enable you, right? So this is basically, I'm saying all this for this because where the Bible says that in Psalms 82, 6, we are all Elohim. Age 430, all of us, children of the Most High God. But we will die like a man, like a man. And we have fallen like one of his princes. We have fallen like his princes, his princes, the stars of heaven, the angelic host. Okay, so we had, we are a spiritual, eternal being. Because that word Elohim means uh, angels, judges, magistrates, special possessions of the Supreme God. Part of 
the one true God, part of. So that's not the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit like we're told in the churches. Okay, so we got a new shiny toy. God gave us the power, the ability, and 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 gave us all duties to carry out. And Satan was the the was given the most gifts, right, by God. They are created beings by God. And he spoke and they carried out his will, his command. They they created the earth. Look at Genesis 1. What's the word for God there? Elohim. The builders that rejected the cornerstone. And so are we, right? And this world was so beautiful and perfect, they thought they should be worshipped for their creation, even though they themselves are a created being. So we're taught to worship the creation more than the creator. We're taught that we're born into life because we're able to breathe and we're born into this world and life. Actually, we're born into death and condemnation. We've separated ourselves from our first estate. That's why it says we're to return home. See, we're all the prodigal sons, all of us here. We took on, uh, um, we're an immortal spiritual being that took on a mortal, dying, decaying physical being. Okay, so that was forbidden by God because he didn't want us to suffer. We thought we wanted more. There was something. We had everything handed to us. We threw away our inheritance. We squandered it on lucivious living like the prodigal son. We just squandered it away. And we took the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we, which is fruit of the womb. And we were birthed into a physical form, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So I said all that to point this out. If you can understand that, and then study the Bible. Take a deeper study. If you love me, will you will abide in my word daily. Take a deeper, earnest, humbling yourself before him and allowing him to teach you through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Uh, like he, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of the Spirit. Otherwise, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You cannot, you cannot perceive or understand spiritual things. Nor will you enter into it. You have to be reconnected back to God through Christ, through the main vine, who is Christ. And then God chastises you. He allows you to reap what you sow, like, like a good parent will do with their children. You know, they just squander what they're given, right? They don't appreciate it, okay? Until they got to work for it for themselves in a way, right? Until they got to pay the bill themselves. And that's what we were made to do. We traded one thing for another. We, tr we traded uh, eternal bliss uh, and, and harmony and peace in a perfect kingdom for a temporary dying, rotting, decaying, decaying world kingdom that's a spiritual kingdom to a physical world that is temporary. Trading our uh, eternal life for uh, a temporary dying, decaying life. Now, and we've separated ourselves from him. Now, he gave us free will. He forbid us to do it, but he gave us free will. Just like you could tell your kids, don't do that, you'll get hurt, or it's not a wise thing to do, but yet they do it. And they got it. Most kids learn the hard way, like I did, learn the hard way. So if you can understand this, you'll understand the Bible so much better. And every word, like, like look, JK, and I forgot to mention the other day, like in my last video, like when I saw that, they're, look, they're going to bring wearing these back. They've been trying ever since it was overturned by a court saying that's unconstitutional, right? And uh, I'm going to attach actually a video that will be, I think, on Odyssey. And uh, I'll put the link in the comment section under this one. So go to that and watch it. Because there's more to this. Like the other day I did a, a video about breeding worms, right? The Bible says that we're good because dust we are and dust we're going to return. And there can be multi, more, even more in depth meanings of that as well. Okay. And I saw that on JK's channel. Like they're, they're going to bring this back. You will look, they haven't given up on it. That's why they're trying to disarm us so much in this country because they, they really need to do that. And they're going to use the IRS and everything else to do that ATF. And they're make, trying to pass all these laws to make things you already have illegal. You know, it's just a bunch of crap. But uh, look, they're not going to give up on it. We're in the end times and you can see the truth is being leaked out right now. The truth of this corruption and what's been going on. See, these people are completely, they want more and more and more for themselves. They want to kill off anybody that's against them and oppress the rest of the world. So you're completely subservient to them and dependent on them and their whims and their will, right? To serve them. Right? So understand that. What did Satan say? I, I will raise my throne above the stars of heaven. Who are the stars? the Elohim, the angelic host. Understand that. Understand that. So this is wicked, evil spirit of pride, a prideful spirit, excessive pride in their own knowledge, in their own understanding, in their own carnality, uh, 
anyways, so understand that. So look at the, please, please, it's to your benefit because they're going to try to bring this back around to watch the link that I attach in the comments section under here. So we're children. We're the prodigal sons that went astray, threw away our inheritance. And that's why we traded one thing for another, uh, eternal spiritual being for a temporal physical form. And now uh, that's why our father, um, God, Jesus Christ, who's God incarnate, the first and last and only physical representation of God himself, he is the word that was made flesh that came into this world to reveal the truth, God's word, to us. And he's the only one, the Lamb of God, worthy to break that seal Satan's put over us through our flesh, to break that mark of Satan, these physical forms. Like It's being played out in this world through various things. And if you can't see the spiritual side of it, please pray that your eyes be open and he reveal himself to you. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. He will speak to you. My sheep hear my voice. That's literal. That's true. That's there's no doubt about it. Once you hear his voice, it might freak you out. Um, and he'll open your eyes because only the bridegroom, only your bridegroom has the authority to lift the veil that covers your eyes, right, of his bride. Only the bridegroom has that authority to lift the veil of his bride. And who are we? The, the church, uh, the body of Christ, uh, Christ's bride that he's coming for, okay, to rescue us. Why do we have to be rescued? Why do we have to be saved, Right? understand all, why do we have to return home and turn back to God, back to God, be restored, meaning you had a relationship that was broken. Why do we have to be reconciled, meaning we had a relationship that was broken? Understand these things. The Bible is so more literal than we're taught, and we're taught it from a carnal, fleshly perspective. We lost so much in translation. We lost the spiritual meaning. That's why only the Spirit of God can open your eyes through faith in Christ, putting your faith in Christ and join him and become his pupil, his disciple, willing to learn directly from him. That's why there's a verse that says, let no man teach you. Only the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God can lead you into all truth and righteousness. And, and this world oppresses us and, and controls us through fear and intimidation and everything by taking away, and they're going to, everything you depend on for your physical sustenance here. Okay, we're not even to fear death. Once you lose the fear of death or anything and just have complete rest rest and trust and faith in Christ, he will provide for you. Even if, like Job said, even if he slays me, I will still trust in him. So there's that, all right? We, our hope is in Christ and only Christ. No doubt about it. He's the only way back to the Father is through the Son, through Christ. Okay, him and the Father were one. He was the unblemished lamb. So, we're blemished. We're the sheep that went astray and we've fallen. We've missed the mark. We've missed that goal to become like the most high God, to know good and evil. We've all fallen into sin. Okay. And it, the Bible is just so much more literal. And when you understand this, look, when you read it, get, get a Bible that has like a thesaurus, um, has like the words that are numbered and look at the words. Don't just look at the strong. So you got to look at BDB, there's mouth. But the main thing is let his spirit guide you and teach you like Christ himself lead you through his word and teach you the true meaning of his word through the gift of his Holy Spirit. It's true. It all, it all works. So do that. Do that. Um, it's a personal relationship. You can't just go sit in a pew or be taught by men or think your whatever affiliation, religious affiliation you're joined to is going to save you. you. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself. You have to. So there's that. But there is an age of accountability, and I've went over that before. And, you know, so there's that. So trust, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone. And uh, he'll awaken you spiritually, restore you from a condition of death, because we're in a condition of death and condemnation here, under subjection to the law. Okay, but when you're born again spiritually and connected back to God through Christ, his only begotten son, now you're saved from the penalty of the Mosaic law, and you've been born again, born anew, born of the spirit, reconnected back to God. And he seals you through that gift of his Holy Spirit, and now you're marked by him as his own. So when you die, you get to go back home. So there's that. I'm going to keep putting this out there and hopefully it's short enough some people will watch this. But there's that. It's just like children. We're just like children. We're children who went astray, sheep that went astray, led to the slaughter. Okay? You don't appreciate what you have or what we had, right? And we had a memory wipe. It's, it's like the word sleep. Look at the word sleep. When Adam went into a deep, stupefied, we, we had a, like a memory wipe, like, like in the Matrix. We had a complete memory wipe. We woke up in a completely different world, different kingdom. 
right? And we lost our connection to God, no longer able to hear his voice. But when you're born again spirit, Jesus Christ connects you back to the Father and you're able to hear his voice through that gift of the Holy Spirit, that inheritance of true life that only Christ can give you himself. So there's that. All right, God bless you. I mean, think about it. Really think about it and look into it. The truth is being revealed right now and the spiritual is being played out in the physical. So understand that. All right, God bless you. Love and respect everybody because our battle is spiritual, not physical. So there's that. All right, have a great day. Bye.